Because it just, the trailer card's gone. It's just. Uh, we are. We'll go ahead and call the August 6th, 16th, 2011 meeting of the Salina Planning Commission to order. First order item on the agenda is approval of the summary minutes of the August 2nd, 2011 meeting. Is there a motion to approve? Um, I'd make a motion to approve those meetings, regular minutes. Second. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve the summary minutes of the August 2nd, 2011 regular meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None being heard, motion carries. Item number two, public hearing on application PDD 11-3 filed by Jones Gillum Renz on behalf of USD 305 requesting approval of a preliminary development plan and change in zoning district classification from C1 restricted business MHP manufactured home park and C3 shopping center to a PDD plan development district to create a campus for a USD 305 operations center. The subject property is an unplatted track bounded by Southview Plaza, AutoZone, Norris Furniture, and a shopping center on the east, Broadway Boulevard on the south, Hageman Avenue on the west, and Cloud Street on the north. The request area includes the for former Hageman School site at 409 West Cloud Street. D. Pat, I'm going to recuse myself. I'm part of this request. Thank you. Sue, would you note that recusal, please? Mr. Chairman, this is an application to create a plan development district. We're going to deviate just a little bit um, from our standard um, format and just focus for a moment on uh, how this particular development concept relates with the recently adopted update to the comprehensive plan. And uh, perhaps no one else, but uh, planning staff has historically referred to this area right here as the uh, golden triangle just because it seemed like it was very heavily underutilized in terms of its location and the land uh, that's available there for some meaningful development and uh, it's never been utilized to its full potential but the future land use plan identifies that as a neighborhood center um, within that triangle and then the blue there represents the public use of Hegeman School. So we wanted to review for you um, what the concept of a neighborhood center is and uh, the neighborhood center is, is intended to be a mixed use node or concentration area that might involve uh, retail or some convenience goods but also recognizes that smaller appropriately scaled institutional uses um, are also appropriate within neighborhood centers uh, in your action adopting the updated comprehensive plan both the Planning Commission and City Commission agreed that neighborhood centers should be considered appropriate locations for educational facilities and other public facilities so th that might include things like libraries or fire stations or things like that that might be located within a uh, neighborhood center serving a larger neighborhood. Um, within the neighborhood center concept, the civic and institutional uses are considered secondary uses that should be located on the edge of mixed use centers or a transition area between neighborhood centers and surrounding residential. So again, we're focused on if you view the 9th Street frontage as, as the commercial node or aspect of this and we're transitioning into residential, then this is located at, at the west edge of that with residential to the north and also to the south across Broadway Boulevard. And we've got some bullet points here um, that the scale and style of development should be compatible with surrounding neighborhoods. Um, there should be amenities, this is uh, public focal points or spaces incorporated into that. Quality design and materials should be used for development to encourage long-term commitment to a location. Uh, there should be a comprehensive urban design scheme and transitions should be considered of how the uh, proposed development transitions to the adjoining uh, area talks about using fencing, plantings, berms, and other methods uh, to accomplish that. There's also a mention there of the
public uses aspect of that um, has some similar um, characteristics that the civic and institutional uses should strive to complement and enhance the existing character of surrounding uses and neighborhoods. Um, so the first thing we did with this was to review the overall development concept of a uh, operations center for USD 305 and we do believe that the proposed land use and the proposed location and the application to accomplish this through uh, plan development district zoning are consistent with the comprehensive plan. That's the big picture view. Um, what you need to focus on is, is looking at the actual details, the uses, the arrangement of spaces, building materials, things of that nature um, to see if you believe that the plan submitted conforms with the uh, development criteria that we described and the city's development standards. So this is being proposed as a planned development district. We had some discussions and I, I think the long-term goal would be that um, whatever occurs here would fit uh, within the parameters of a future public use zoning district so that uh, what you would see here um, would fit into just about any standard zoning classification uh, criteria that we would have. The one exception or modification that's being requested that we've identified is a waiver of the paved parking requirement and that is for a portion of uh, gravel parking being proposed around the maintenance facility and warehouse building. And that, that is primarily in, in these areas here. Um, so I believe, um, John, you might need to blow that. Is it possible to blow that up just a, a little bit, at least to 100%? Anyway, it's, it was difficult to read in your scaled down packet, but when this says granular paving here, that's referring to um, gravel or potentially asphaltic millings, whereas this existing parking here is paved and these pathways here are proposed as, as paving. So we have... Um, set out for you the purpose of why we have planned development districts, what, what their purpose is. Um, you're supposed to be looking at how the development would injure or damage the use, value, and enjoyment of surrounding property. Is the site accessible from public roads that are adequate to carry the traffic? Um, will the development put an undue burden on public services? Um, looking at the structure, the parking areas, the walks, the lighting, and uh, how those are compatible with the surrounding area. And then uh, look at any modifications of regulations that would otherwise be applicable to the site. And it's our interpretation that a standard application of zoning in a commercial or institutional setting would require that parking be paved with asphalt or concrete. So um, if you were building a church or a school or a commercial um, facility of any kind, there's a requirement that all parking areas be paved, and that is the one deviation that we identified here. So the, uh, in the way of background for this property, in 1951 there was a trailer court that was developed at the corner of Hageman and Cloud and it was uh, known as the Traco Trailer Court and was purchased by Joe Cronenberger in 1973 and operated as the Shady Grove Mobile Home Park. Um, that park use was abandoned. The site has been cleared of mobile homes and the property was put up for sale. Um, we included in your packet some information about a, a 1981 plat and plan to develop a shopping center here that would have faced Broadway and uh, occupied this area along here. That was to be known as, as Broadway Plaza. Um, that was 
approved by the Planning Commission but never finalized or developed. Um, we also had some plans in here where Hegeman School was converted to other school district uses and some additional parking uh, was added uh, south of the building. They uh, purchased a strip of land from Mr. Cronenberger here um, so they could get around to access that area. So this is pretty much an unchanged given and most of the changes we're talking about is, is west of here and southwest of here between there and Broadway and there and Hegeman. Um, so the school district has now purchased all of Mr. Cronenberger's land holdings. They filed a request for planned development district zoning. This is a two-step process. Um, in one case, it allows you to create a customized district that fits the proposed development. It also allows you to review a site plan and address any areas of concern that you have through modifications or uh, conditions. And so what we noted here was, in this case, the applicant is requesting approval of a gravel parking area around the proposed maintenance center and warehouse building. The way that we're approaching this plan is that the, uh, the maintenance center or, uh, and warehouse is phase one of the uh, development. And the way that we would be visualizing this today is that before the Planning Commission has uh, a final vote and decision that you would be addressing all the details um, related to the development of that maintenance facility. And the other uses proposed here are an alternate school and a special education school. And then a further um, undefined area that is, is down in, in that corner where there's no defined uh, uses. So our, most of our focus today is going to be on the specifics of the warehouse maintenance facility because that, that is the most developed proposal at this time. The other items would come back in future phases. So the types of things that we're looking at in the way of um, uses would be uh, a maintenance shop, a warehouse, a library media center, a laundry facility, a master server room, a mechanic bays for vehicles, uh, perhaps one of those bays as a car wash, also a bay that would be used to service the school district's lawn service equipment. They're looking at a, a fueling station similar to what the city has over on East Elm um, for the uh, servicing and fueling of vehicles. One thing they are not looking at or proposing at this time is any sort of bus barn or facility where you would be parking, storing, maintaining uh, buses. So there is, there is not a, a, a bus barn per se like Durham's operation out on West State that would be proposed or relocated uh, to this location. So that, that is what the activities would be um, within that building. And so um, if you look at the suitability of the site for development under the existing zoning, the majority of the property is zoned manufactured home park, um, which is not very conducive to redevelopment. I don't think we would want to see a new manufactured home park um, developed in this location that would be an underutilization of the property. Um, and then we look at how this fits in or blends in with um, the other uses on the property. Um, and particularly uh, if you look at the west side of, of South 9th Street, um, you're looking at the Alco Center or the former Alco Plaza Center that has Genesis Health Club. That is the most dominant feature uh, in the area. And uh, the, the plan does emphasize that this would be an appropriate transition or buffer use. What you need to look at is whether the specific plan that's proposed uh, would be compatible with the zoning and uses and development pattern on neighboring properties. Um, 
there are a number of things that were uh, would or could be addressed by a plat and uh, there is a requirement that this property is platted and in an ideal world the plat would be uh, considered concurrently um, with this development proposal um, we don't have that uh, for your consideration at this time but things like stormwater runoff control location and sizing of any detention break in access for Broadway Boulevard the need for and sizing of utility extensions and easements those would be addressed in the plat review so uh, we're gonna focus on on the content and John if you could um, put up what you think is the best site plan will will go through that maybe one of the the colorized ones John this one will work if you can blow that up so again the, uh, the the point of emphasis here is that we're we're talking about the full 17 acres but in terms of of immediate and first phase development we're talking about development of this structure here we're talking about a driveway coming off of Hegeman um, with a looped connection here back to cloud a paved tie-in to this driveway here so really this would become redundant and not frequently used that this would be the primary circulation pattern and uh, there may or may not be truck deliveries um, to this site that would involve semis um, but that there, there would be a, a circulation pattern for those again this parking's already existing and it serves this facility here and a proposal to uh, have a curb cut here on Broadway there's restricted access on Broadway and the exact location and approval of that break in access would occur through the platting process as we mentioned um, most of the concepts that have been discussed would involve some sort of uh, stormwater collection and detention over in this area um, there's an existing pipeline that that goes over to 9th Street and that would go over at a controlled rate the uh, front entrance of this facility would would be oriented towards the uh, northeast and this would be the the back side of the building um, we have elevation drawings for you in in the packet that if they're eight and a half by 11s they're not uh, readily um, visible to pick up some of the detail um, we've got those minimized these are are the black and white um, versions with that there's also some color photo renderings in your packet um, but we are we are, are looking at a fairly attractive um, but very long frontage that would face uh, the, the south and so um, we'll let the uh, architect Mr. Renz kind of walk you through that but it, this is almost <coughs> a case where we we have uh, too many drawings but this is a rendering of what um, would look like this would be Hegeman intersection here so this would face so somewhat to the southwest this would face along Broadway in terms of uh, building orientation you're going to have the rear backing up to Broadway um, but it is an attractive frontage there the uh, what's been discussed in the way of landscaping um, that it's been pointed out to us by the city forester that there's 
some overhead power lines along the uh, the Broadway frontage there, and we're looking at using uh, xeriscaping with um, shrubs and native plants and uh, ornamental grasses as opposed to uh, trees along that uh, property between the back of the building and Broadway um, so we don't have interference with the uh, overhead power lines and that landscaping is is conceptual at this point. Um, I think we discussed uh, the off-street parking and uh, that we'll have that um, on the opposite side and uh, as I understand the proposal I don't know if we have the details here but there was some discussion about using screening here that if if gravel surfacing is allowed that it would not be uh, visible or uh, noticeable because of, of screening so it wouldn't be out in the front yard whether it was noticeable. Um, there's two ways to look at that. What's noticeable to neighbors and the public and then what's noticeable in the way of setting some kind of precedent for other development because you might um, make it um, visible or less visible depending on the treatments that were used but if other uh, developments or developers become aware of that or become of the uh, idea that the Planning Commission is open to waiving paving requirements in certain circumstances then that may lead to further requests so that that is something that in terms of of waiving or varying from that requirement needs to look be looked at uh, very closely um, again I think the other thing that is is not we don't have a, a prototype um, for at this time is is any proposed signage but even though this in concept would be platted as as one lot and block I think we would look at um, the separate facilities for this the school sites here and up here in this facility and any development here would be looked at independently um, as far as as signage go but we would view um, the signage requirements applying here as to being the same as would apply to any of the local middle school high school or elementary school sites so um, I did want to just touch a little bit on the uh, the question of paving because I think when we looked at this application the first thing we did was how does it fit in with the uh, comprehensive plan vision for the area and conceptually it does and then uh, give you a little bit of a, a background in any uh, commercial institutional uh, parking area the driveways access aisles parking spaces have to be paved with asphalt or concrete and there's a couple um, reasons for that the the requirement part of it was to keep loose gravel and other material from getting out into paved streets and into storm drains things of that nature there's also the question of dust um, that can be stirred up either by moving traffic or just from the wind and so the these only settings where you can have uh, unpaved parking are in industrial settings the I-2 and the I-3 district allow for gravel or asphalt millings parking the only other exception to that is if I'm a contractor and I'm in a commercial district um, I can have my parking and my access aisles for employees and customers and all all would be paved if I wanted to have an area in back where I stored flatbed trailers or equipment that didn't go out every day and I just wanted to have a fenced in storage yard I could surface that with gravel but the areas where people park and drive and maneuver on a daily basis are required to be paved so our our interpretation is that the current 
standard would be that this area would need to be paved with asphalt or concrete and the plan development district is a mechanism by which um, that requirement could be waived or requested to be waived. So we have um, given our best effort here to uh, develop some alternatives for you. And uh, one of this would be to, to view this as, um, as giving some indication of approval conceptually, um, but not making a formal recommendation on the plan development district if you think there's a need to pin down some additional information to make a decision on the uh, change to plan development district zoning. You could postpone consideration of the zoning change until a final plat is submitted and can be reviewed concurrently with this development plan. Uh, you could approve the requested zoning change um, as requested to create a plan development district with any conditions that you deem appropriate and any waivers or exceptions that are requested and you would recommend approving or you could recommend denial of the zoning change uh, altogether citing your reasons for that. Um, if you believe that all your uh, questions and details have been pinned down sufficiently to, to take some action. Today, we've outlined some potential conditions on page seven and eight of your report. And if your packet's like mine, you might have your pages out of order because um, mine goes from seven to six to eight. And that, that would be our fault in collating. Um, but on page seven, we have tried to identify all the uses that you would be approving for this uh, area. And the uh, one that we noticeably admitted, w omitted, was um, the future schools. And again, the, the request here is for the full 17 acres. So we're really, from a zoning standpoint, focusing on the full 17.3 acres from a plan standpoint, we've primarily focused on the maintenance and warehouse building. Um, so item one there, there's a glaring omission of not listing schools, um, either elementary, intermediate, or secondary as a permitted use. So that would need to be inserted. Um, this appears to meet all the uh, the setback and bulk regulations of the R3 district. Um, so we're recommending that those apply, um, that signage be subject to the same requirements as all the other school district sites, that a final plat be approved before there's any final approval of a zoning change, um, that um, you would receive final site development plans for the alternative school site, the special education school site, or phases two and three. Those would come to you separately before those occurred, that no development would occur in the southeast corner there until a plan had been developed for that. That might be under the school district's um, ownership and direction, or they may choose at some point to uh, find that to be surplus and it might be developed by someone else, um, that the uh, city engineer approve the plans and sp specifications for the stormwater collection system and any proposed detention or retention before there's any building permit for phase one issued, that the director of utilities approve the plans and specifications for water and sewer line extensions that we receive a detailed planting plan for the landscaped areas and a plan for lighting to ensure no light spill onto adjoining properties and uh, that development of phase one conform with the uh, plan that you're seeing here today as to the plan layout, the landscape plan as you understand it, and the build building uh, elevations. Um, we've also mentioned there that um, if there's areas 
that you don't believe enough attention has been addressed to uh, screening. Uh, those could be identified. And then it's, um, if you want to specifically address, and it, it may be they're covered up and be in different state of a re repair, um, but it, it seemed like the uh, completion or extension at least to Hageman of a, a public sidewalk system along there would be in order. There's nothing on Broadway to connect to at this time, but there is on cloud. So with that, I'd be open to addressing any questions. And I, I think this is a case where uh, the project architect may be able to better explain some of the details of what's going on inside and outside the proposed maintenance building than, than staff was able to. Mr. Questions to staff. Um, does the uh, reworking of the cloud and Ninth Street intersection affect this in any way? I'll let Mr. Stack address that, but I, I don't so. think it would necessarily reach this far. No, I don't think so. Okay. We don't have any improvements that that would impact this area really, other than drains water that way in some fashion, but we haven't really looked at any drainage reports yet to, to know exactly how they're gonna drain the site, but that's that's all we have so far. Dan, is the, the traffic on Broadway or the traffic uh, in and out of that uh, uh, south entrance um, on that property, is that such that uh, it's going to be any problem traffic getting in and out of there, you think? Nope. I do not believe so. And, and yeah, is it, it's, yeah, there's a, is there a median yeah, in a there? it's a divided median now, so. And is there all, all, any uh, plans to have a left turn uh, lane being installed on the south? Southbound. At, yeah, that's at a good this, question. Yeah, at this sure. time we are looking at a curb cut on Broadway only, but not a median cut. Okay. So if, if that this curb cut was approved through the platting process, then vehicles leaving would be able to make that turn but not come out this way, and nobody coming southbound would be able to turn in. It would be essentially a right in, right out. And the exit there on Hageman, they can only go north there, correct? Where the little That's correct. Turn circle thing. Yeah, you would, I think Correct. This is a, we understand the circulation pattern. This is primarily going to be an entrance, and vehicles would either come out here, or they would circulate up here. But but the plan is that vehicles would come out of here and leave that way, or they would come here, but not would, there would not be trucks or things e exiting out that direction. If they did, they would have to turn right. So that's not a cut through at Hageman, where that little circle roundabout, whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. We may have to. That does not connect with Broadway, does it? No. What happened was it was originally designed to be a, a cul-de-sac only that dead ended, and then there was a provision here to be able to make a right turn off Broadway to come in here. And so you could come here, turn here, and come in like that. And you could come, and Dan will have to educate us on the proper maneuver, either coming down this way and turn that, or I don't think you're supposed to go around the circle, but we'll let, we'll let Dan give us that answer. But it is, it is possible to come down Hageman and make a left turn in there. I don't know, Dean. I'll have to see if the, I'll have to talk to Russ Lamer about that with the police department. I think you can just, it's a drive over circle right now. I don't know if you have to actually go around. Do, I don't know if it's signed that way. We'll have to check. But but the original concept was that was a dead end with a, a cul-de-sac that you came down here and could turn around and get out if you didn't mean to go there. But this right turn in was was modified in the design. So there would be two curb cuts on Broadway, not one. No, one one curb cut on Broadway and one on Hageman. Oh well. Yeah. Okay. The, yeah, right. The curb cuts are here on Hageman, one up here on Cloud, and then 
there's currently restricted access here and they're proposing a break in that restricted access here but the median would remain in place okay I'm still confused on the circle that presently does not you cannot exit onto Broadway from there correct but you can go that's in. correct you can go going in? to the north going to the north you can turn in there oh okay I guess not, you cannot come down this when I was circling and that turn I, on Broadway. right yeah okay you can come down here yeah. and go here or you could turn into that okay and you could come this way turn here yeah and do that yeah just a clarification on some of the drawings in the packet the south entrance that on this drawing that indicates hard paving coming off of Broadway right. or on to Broadway, and then it looks like there's a, a line that they're proposing, then it turned to gravel. On these drawings, yeah. that shows gravel all the way out to the street. Right. This is the correct drawing that we're viewing on the. We'll let Mr. Renz okay. identify that, but what has has happened is that there were there were drawings submitted staff feedback and input and and modifications made and it's possible I would believe that some of the black and white drawings that were in your packet were earlier drawings and because we knew that these if and if some of you got a hard packet that went through the copy machine this would be practically black and you wouldn't be able to see anything so we put the black and white drawings in there but the ideas that this this was hard surface what's requested to be gravel or what they're referring to as granular paving is this area right here so paving paving paved parking these would apparently be paved stalls that would be accessed from gravel and then this area here is proposed as as gravel and gravel here and this here would consist instead of having a lineup of trees along here we would have zero escaping planting bed here that would be native plants ornamental grasses things of that nature and then a proposal to have screening here so that this gravel area would not not be visible um, from the Broadway frontage so the way that I've interpreted that is that the uh, gravel surfacing is proposed in lieu of paving and screening and uh, what you would normally have in a parking lot situation is some kind of buffer here but you wouldn't necessarily screen the parking area from view um, you would break this up by use of, of plant but uh, they're proposing a screen so that this area that's proposed to be gravel would not be visible from Broadway and so I, I believe that this drawing is the most recent and would be the best reflection of all the uh, the details that staff has had in providing feedback to the applicant and their architect so um, Mr. Renz can clarify that but this this would be the drawing that you should focus on in terms of the most recent um, revision and proposal. D Dean, what's the purpose of that proposed easement there uh, to the east of that facility? In uh, 1951, the, there was a sewer line installed there to serve the mobile home court, and there's an existing sewer there, and my notes from the director of utilities is the city is is prepared to take that as a public sewer and uh, to do that it would need to be located in a platted easement and there is no easement there today so again the uh, issue of utility extensions and easements and the access control and drainage those would all be addressed through a plat and we are uh, at the site plan stage but not the plat stage at this point on this drawing where would the detention ponds be um, it, you, 
it's got possible stormwater detention here. Um, there, there is, you see this little symbol right here? There is a uh, opening and inlet right here at the edge of the property, and there is a pipeline that was put in when Hageman School was built that uh, runs over and runs into a storm drain in Ninth Street. <clears throat> and based on the uh, studies that have been done to date on this property, it somewhat is a, a bowl and the uh, water tends to collect in the middle and not really have anywhere to go. So the, the concept is that you would direct the uh, collected runoff to here, detain it, and uh, release that in a controlled manner through that pipeline over to 9th Street. And again, there's a, there's a drainage study that is currently being prepared, and the uh, actual dimensions and volume and everything of that will be established during the plat. So on the site plan, that's being identified as as an area for possible stormwater detention, but we don't have the actual dimensions or the volume of that at this time. Where is the fueling station proposed to be? Um, right in this location okay. here. I can't read that. <laughs> will the tanks for that be above ground or will they be below ground? I will defer that one to the architect an applicant, the actual design features of that. Any further questions of staff? Okay, Mr. Renz, would you care to address the commission? Or Mr. Kennedy, I'm sorry. I want to make a few comments if I may. Ken Kennedy, representing USD 305, 1511 Gypsum, Salina, Kansas, and I'm here on behalf of the school district for this plan and to address any questions you may have. Um, let me, if you will, I'll try to answer some of the questions that you had and additional ones you may have. Let me first make a few introductory comments. Dean first did a nice job explaining the project and the concept of the project. It, it's important for you to know that we've worked with the city staff for two or three years now from the time we were considering this property till this point now to make sure that the things we were doing was in line with what the city might expect for this area. So we've had a good working effort trying to line this project out so that uh, city requirements are met as well as our needs for the district are met. The other point I want to make is that we really are concerned and want to make a good faith effort to be good neighbors in every one of our locations, not just this one. We, we go to great efforts to make sure that our properties are well maintained, that the public is proud of them, and this started well before my tenure with this district and the efforts the community made to enhance their schools and their properties. So we want to make sure that what we do here presents an attractive appearance to that area and enhances the area, doesn't distract from it. The other part of that, we, we did do a lot of consideration of how this can serve as a buffer so that it's not, uh, so it does buffer from, uh, from commercial to residential in a nice transition way. So looking at this particular rendering here, I think I want to talk about that just a little bit, if you will. And John, if you could bring it down so we could see farther north just a little bit, I would appreciate it. A little bit farther. Now, if you look, Right now, the facility we're looking at would be phase one, and that's the facility Dean explained very well to you. And that particular facility borders on the east side, basically our property, and then the back of Genesis Health Club. And certainly, um, then when you look at bordering on the west side, which is here, it actually borders on the west side very little to no residential. In fact, no residential. This is used car lots and some commercial. And then I don't think this building is really being used right now, but that's some form of commercial establishment there. So the back side, what we're calling the back side, which is really the, the, the view side of the building would be this. And we've chosen to use split face block on that construction, as well as some decorative metal, as well as pitched roofs, as opposed to flat roofs, which you see on most big box buildings. So it'll have an attractive appearance from Broadway because we truly want that. And if if you take a drive up and down Broadway, you can see that this facility and the renderings we show will have an enhanced look over many facilities that are along Broadway. And our goal is to, to help Broadway develop into something um, a little more than what it, it may be right now as far as some um, growth in that area. The other concept that we really considered hard is to make sure that 
what we did, this is the corner of the facility we're proposing now with our PDD, but phase two and phase three facilities, would this facility would be an alternative school, it would be a regular attended school for students. This facility here would also be a regularly attended facility for students, and, and it would be used primarily for preschool or 18 to 21 year old transition students. We're not sure yet. Both those would be separate facilities, separate missions. But the beauty of that is that we're also transitioning from our operations facility to schools to residences, which is directly north across the street. So again, we have schools in the residential areas, which is typical of most communities. And so it does, it does lend itself, we think, uh, to the area and to the transition that's necessary from one type of uh, commercial to, to residential. The other part is we're trying to keep the focus of our activities within the interior of our property. In other words, the majority of traffic, the majority of staff that come and go and so forth would be in the interior as opposed to parking on the outside coming and going from the outside of the property. Um, the other thing that's important to note with school development is that we are primarily an eight to five facility and not even really eight to five. But by and large, there's little weekend traffic around schools unless you have activity complexes, which we're not proposing here. And there's little traffic around schools of an evening. Uh, so we really have very little traffic during the hours that most people would be home. Our traffic is more daytime hours. Um, so, and, and the other consideration is we want to make sure that we, we truck traffic is always a concern. It would be a concern of mine if I was a neighbor. The beauty of this is Broadway is a four lane major thoroughfare and it's split by median, so truck traffic will not be making left turns. As Dean talked to you, truck traffic will be making right-hand turns, right on and right, uh, right off and right back on, and we'll be on the other side away from what would be residential here. The, the truck traffic is pretty much limited when I say truck traffic. Most of our truck traffic, the majority would be Ranger pickups. Uh, that's, that's our service trucks that you see around town with the USD 305 logo on them. They're small. They really leave the facility in the morning and go out to the various facilities for their daily activities, come back oftentimes for lunch possibly, come back for supplies, and then come back in the evening or would be stored in this facility. But by and large, that traffic is pretty much limited to our needs. There would be some commercial truck traffic in the fact that, that there could be about one a day we might have UPS or a semi come with some deliveries. And um, some days it could be more, some days it could be less, but the average is five to six trucks a week of larger scale that bring in supplies, school supplies. Uh, the biggest loads we would get of type of that supply would be four times a year right now, unless we start using more copy paper, but four times a year we have semi loads of copy paper brought. Typically, it's a UPS truck or a bobtail truck or a semi might bring in a pallet of something. But the loading and unloading of the semis would be, again, on our side of the property behind the facility. And uh, so we've tried to try to incorporate that in so that it doesn't become a, a nuisance for anybody in the area. The, the facility is more than just, when we allude to it as a maintenance warehouse, it's really an operations facility for us, uh, more of operations. Uh, the people that will be assigned there, will, the, ones, the, the maintenance staff really aren't there that often because they're out working in the building. The people that will be assigned at that facility will not be large in number, but they'll be working there daily, and that would be our copy center staff, which would be three people in the copy center. It would be our IMC, IMC, our Instructional Media Center staff, which right now are two people, and they support the libraries throughout the school. And then the other staff would be a, a clerk and our pony, uh, what we call pony. It's our internal school mail system would run from that facility, and so they would load the mail and then deliver it and come back and, and bring mail back in and sort it. So then we also have laundry, and not to alarm with a laundry, our laundry is commercial in nature, but small. It's um, it would have similar machines, of course, to the laundromat, but we wash our own cloths we use in the kitchen, and we don't wash uniforms, but we wash our own towels and those type of things at our laundry, and our service rags that our custodians use are washed at our own laundry, so we have our own laundry service. And then a large portion of this would be a, an area here for use by our uh, uh, head-in room. Right now, our present center of computer operations is city-owned facility memorial hall, and that's where our build-out for our computers work except our IT department is located at Hageman School. So we need to get our head-end facilities near where our IT department is located. So that would be one of the uses. So I wanted to review those uses uh, with you so that you kind of get a feel of what's coming and going from that facility. Um, we, really, we really are concerned about this being attractive. I want to emphasize that. And we want to maintain the appearance of it. 
when we purchased the property, we did a lot of work to clear the property, to clean it up. We're working now to remove uh, some of the cement foundations of the mobile homes. And, and Sydney will ask, so I'll, I'll just answer the question, some trees will have to be removed. There's no question about it. <laughs> Uh, there is an awful lot, because it was a mobile home park, there were a lot of trees there. Some of them are not really what you'd call quality trees, but they're there and they will need to be removed. But our goal is to meet the city requirements as far as whatever they may be as far as um, landscaping. But we hope to incorporate Zeriscape, or zero, some call it Zeriscape, but Zeriscape landscape. Our board is really concerned about the use of water of underground water. We, w we don't want to excessively use water. We have to use it some for our practice fields and our athletic competition fields, but we've backed away from, from irrigation for our playgrounds and for our yards and so forth as much as possible. You'll see some South High School's front yard is irrigated, South Middle School's front yard is irrigated, but we're not adding to our irrigation any more than just absolutely necessary. That's why when we design this, we want to use Zeriscape type planting on the front, which is more native grasses and natural plantings that will do a beautification, but yet not require the extensive watering that cool season grasses and so forth require. So that was one of our goals with our landscaping plan in this area here. And with the, the screening that Dean talked about here, more plantings that take less water, but yet provide the beauty and the enhancement that we want. So with that, we think the traffic flow works really very well here. As you know, I'm always one that, that's concerned about the number of curb cuts. We actually will be giving up the use of some. Those being here, there were several entrances along there that were there for purposes of the mobile home park. Those will not be necessary for our needs anymore. We hope to, at some point, eliminate the need for this entrance right there that is currently a curb cut off a cloud because this driveway will serve to meet that need and get rid. So we'll re be replacing this one with this, which will be a, a much more functioning curb cut as far as use. There's already one there in this area right now because there's a little building setting here, and there's already a curb cut there. So we won't be adding one. We'll just be enhancing it and paving it. So it'll, it'll and this is dirt right now, which will become paving later on. Um, and then, of course, the additional one would be here, but in uh, trading these out for that and then the one that Dean spoke with about on Broadway. The other thing we've done is, is work closely with the city to make sure we address their needs as far as utilities. Uh, the fact that the sewer line exists is very helpful and it's deep enough to support uh, and sized properly. And Charles will talk about that a little bit more. But we also are working with the city on the water and there, by, by allowing an easement and putting in the appropriate water for our needs, we'll also be able to loop a system that the city already has. And so we'll, we'll loop from Broadway to a line that already exists behind Genesis. I want to mention also, if you will, that in, in our drainage detention pond area, as, as you know, I'm always very concerned about what we do with runoff water and, and what problems we may create with that. The detention pond will be designed as such to control that, but we, working with the city and Genesis, did, deed, or did um, dedicate several no-build easements in this area so Genesis could construct their facility of the size they needed to accommodate their needs. So now we have no-build easements, which will become the detention pond areas, which is appropriate for that. And we kind of planned that ahead so that that would be available for their needs and also meet our needs later on as far as detention. Um, with that, um, let me see if gravel, I missed anything Ken. that I want to. Yeah, Ken, we, we all want to know about the gravel. Want to know about gravel? You know, I'm, I'm going to stand here and tell you that my preference would be paving as well. It always is. But when you look at school district budgets right now and you look at what we're facing with the cuts that we've had to take, we really have to be conservative with our resources. We don't see the traffic creating the kind of dust problem that one might think, and we would be concerned about controlling that ourselves because most of the, if there is a dust problem, it's going to be our problem because our service entrance doors will be along the back side next to the gravel parking. We do want to make sure that we use uh, paved surfacing for the majority of areas where our staff will come and go and park as well as visitors would come and go from the facility, which this would be their visitor entrance in this area here or this area here. We'll have paved parking here. We'll also have the majority of the paved access for trucks that are coming in, but there will be some traffic in this area that is on gravel. And someday it would be our hope to put paving in. That would be our desire, not be forced by someone, but our desire to do so. But right now, in order to control costs on the facility, we really need to, to get consideration for gravel as opposed to paved hard surface. Questions you might have of me? Well, Ken, 
when you sit on this board on this side, one thing that you talk a lot about is setting precedent. Right. And um, I, I think if we allowed gravel here, that's what we would be doing. And anybody else could come to us and say, times are hard and paving is going to be expensive. A church would say that. Any business could say that. I understand the school districts, uh, you know, all of that, but I, I'm, I need somebody to really justify to me how we can make a precedence here and then be able to deny it the next time. I think we can make a precedence here because it's very well designed. It's completely interior to the entire property and they have a substantial amount of their paved driveway in there and none of this is going to escape the property that I can imagine. And if they've got a problem with it, that uh, it's going to be their problem, as Ken says, leaking into their own building long before it'll be a problem for the public outside of the facility. So I think because it's so well designed inside the total plan that it makes a very sensible exception. Except on the south end. You know, there's a long drive in the way they have it proposed. But there's there. gravel there. And they plan to to enclose that as well with the screening, didn't I understand? Yeah, the screening, we're using, we hope to use natural planting such as, as a type of tree that, that will control the dirt that might come from that. And there will, really this area down here will be very little park. I would see park there would be a vehicle. And the service bays for our mechanics, we, when I say service bays, we do limited mechanic work, but we work on our own Ranger pickups and some of our cars and change oil and so forth. Cars might be waiting to be serviced, maybe parked here. The majority of our, our team will come and go from this area or this area and drive in service space. The trucks will be parked in here at night and you'll see the plans when Charles says trucks will be parked in here at night. So we'll have some trucks coming and going from here throughout the day to the back side of the facility, but not an extensive number. And by comparison, I don't know if you're familiar with our current facility, which is on 5th and Mulberry. It's the old, I think it was a bread, bread bakery at one time. And that's the type of traffic we're talking about. That's our Ranger pickups come and go from that facility. And it's right on a 5th Street, and it hasn't created a large amount of traffic problems, I think. But it's, it's just not convenient there, nor sized properly. Um, so we, we're going to merge some facility, but gravel, I, I understand your concerns, and I too uh, would like to see paving at some time, but right now we don't see the need for it because of the amount of traffic that we have. That th it just won't be that much. What, what do you think? Do you have a, any kind of a cost estimate of what that will save you? Uh, I have to defer that to Charles. I'll give him a little time to calculate what the cost of. I think it's probably going to cost in range $200,000. So that'd be the savings of using gravel. Okay. Um, I want to talk a little bit about fueling because you asked the question. We, we're not hung up on that necessarily, but out of convenience, right now we fuel at the local quick shops in those places, which is not really handy for us. We would put it be up above ground fueling and it would be contained and it would be, the, it'd be small tanks. We're not talking about 10,000 gallon tanks. We're talking about small tanks for truck purposes. We don't be fueling buses there. We won't be fueling. It'd be our basically our service vehicles that will be fueled there. They have a like concrete. A 400 gallon tank. Well, you know, I don't know. We haven't really determined that yet, but we're talking about pickup trucks. Did you determine? I, th I would think really probably logically a thousand gallon tank for our pickup trucks. It does have to be, does have to be, um, they have to have a retention around them. They do. Okay. And it's all concrete. And actually, actually, they move in move in tanks now that have steel re detention or retention oh. around them, and the tanks are all suffering. And we wouldn't own that. We'll lease that. It'll be moved in place. Pumps will be owned by somebody else. We'll lease that from the, our fuel provider. Is that something you would screen around on the east side and the south side there, you think? or there, We would actually, we will have some overflow parking. We have several trailers. Right now they're parked. If you drive by 5th and Mulberry, you can see the trailers parked in that graveled area, by the way, behind their existing shop. And uh, that we would replace that screened-in area here for that trailer parking so it's in a secure area. The fuels would also be screened in. I mean, it'd be fenced-in areas. I'm sorry. What a... Excuse me. What other outdoor storage would you have? There's a we're we're planning on the only additional outdoor storage right now would be a small building here, which would be a bit as an alternative on the alternate on the bit, and that would be for 
salt storage and some, when I say chemicals, we don't use any harsh chemicals much, but we do have some sprays that we use on weeds and so forth. So we would have a small storage facility here that would be mostly for our salt storage. So we, we keep salt, and salt's kind of damaging if you put it in this building here, have to use salt in the winter on our parking lots. So that wouldn't be, that wouldn't be outdoor storage, that would be covered? It would be a building. So a other building. outdoor storage where things would be? Right here. Trailers in yeah. an outdoor storage here. Okay. Right. That's and it. This area right there would be outdoor storage okay. for trailers. Right there would be a, a building for our salt storage and other chemicals that we want to keep outside as opposed to in the building. And then the fueling station right there. Back, back to the, uh, the, the gravel question. So uh, do you anticipate using uh, gravel if this were, were approved or would you anticipate using asphalt millings? You know. I don't know. Let me let me defer to Charles. Charles, which is the, would you say the preferred would be gravel or asphalt mailings? Uh, well, at this point we've talked about gravel. Uh, we want to make sure that we design it to accommodate semi-trucks. Mm -hmm. so, you know, we did that. We can't hear that. <laughs> we can't hear that. Could, could you come to the podium, please? Sorry about that. No, uh, at this point we had just anticipated using gravel. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we had the, you know, the right thickness and the, the gravel design. We're working with the civil engineer on the gravel paving design to accommodate semi-truck traffic. But uh, at, you know, at this point we have, we have only considered gravel. So. Okay. Any further questions of Mr. Kennedy or Mr. Renz? Yeah, I, have, I, I have a couple. Uh, can you address the uh, uh, the uh, concern about the Cloud Street sidewalk. Uh, when Dean speak, spoke about the need for a sidewalk on Cloud Street, I, I don't disagree with that. I, I think that's something we might want to consider. I mean, I I'd certainly think that's appropriate. We are, we are ones who believe in sidewalks, especially for the needs of our students and so forth. And we do have some students now who do walk actually from this area here down along Cloud Street to their schools. So uh, we would probably want to put that sidewalk in. I think it's very appropriate. Obviously, we don't see a need for a sidewalk along here because there's nothing to join it to, but certainly this one seems most appropriate and it ties in with the one that exists presently in front of the Hageman Education Center. Isn't there one already there, Dean? There's a, is there one here now, Dan, along there? Looks like it. I don't know. I, it's, you know in, I can't uh, it's in pieces there. There's it's parts seen, of it where it's covered over and parts of it, but it's, it may need to be rehabbed more the fact that it's completely missing. I notice there's a, there's a little piece here in front of that building because I go in front of that building sometimes. I don't know about farther down. I've never seen it, so it must be grown over with grass and so forth. It, my other question is, uh, you know, it, was, it was stated as a concern uh, by, by the city about uh, the uh, uh, lack of the uh, uh, fact that it's unplatted. Uh, can you just go ahead and, and can that be a, uh, addressed? You just make some comment toward it. I, it didn't seem like it was a major hang up, but the I think planning? it's worth noting. Exactly. Actually, actually, we've done we've done the survey work to accomplish the platting. The the drainage study has been completed. We just haven't got the final plat done because we needed to get approval from the planning commission before we go to the extent of replatting it. There's no sense in us replatting it if we can't use it for what we want it to use it for. But we did all the required legal surveys. In fact, in advance when we bought this property, we had legal surveys done. Those have been merged together by our engineer, and the plat is will be very close to ready. But we're also working with the plat right now. We've got to make sure that all utilities are addressed, the city's needs are addressed, the utility company's needs are addressed, and we think we're about there. So that's the reason the final plat's not done. And frankly, unless we get approval to move forward to this, there'd be no reason for us to plat at this time. Does that answer that question? Can One other thing I want to mention is here, too, there's, there's utility lines, uh, West Star's utility lines run along Broadway, and we want to be careful with our plannings there that we don't create the problems that we're seeing all over town with trees that are look like a V and uh, years down the road or they have to cut the side off to keep another utility line. We want the type of plantings along here that don't create those problems. And we've talked to the city about that. Ken, looking into your crystal ball and knowing that things don't aren't always constant in the in the educational world, do, do these list of permitted uses uh, and with the addition of schools as number L, is that going to be uh, You'll have to tell me with that. What, tell me which uh, one you're referring the, to. The permitted uses shall include a maintenance shop, warehouse, vehicle service bays, Page including seven. a car wash yeah. bay, 
uh, fueling station, administrative offices, copy center, laundry, library, media, media center, master server room, accessory off street parking, accessory outdoor storage in the schools. And future schools, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I think we've. You know, I think, as far as we've known, without with a statement, I, I, we've made an attempt to be all-encompassing with our needs presently. Mm -hmm. But certainly, as I talked about, uh, the um, the uh, next phase of this would come back for approval again because plan development, and that would be alternative school and the special education school. Those two schools, those would have to be approved too. So the beauty of the PDD, and and well, I, I think it's the right move here. Is that it gives us an opportunity as we as we grow and other needs emerge we could bring those back to the planning commission to get approval and endorsement both the city and the and the city commission and the planning commission for those growths and changes so we can't predict what the future may be but by using pdd we would have the option to come back the property to the southeast the remainder of that, that is that all us needs to all of that yes it is that is all our property at this time you know, we, we've looked at some possibilities. We really have. We've talked about the options for that, even discussed briefly about if this development grows along there, would it be valuable for us to have it as, as a property sale? The, we don't know. We don't have any immediate desires for that. We talked about transportation at one time, too, about having transportation in other. But we just don't know if that would work very well. And so right now, uh, that, that potentially in the future, that might be considered. But what we do with it, no plans at this time and don't really know what the future will hold for it. The, the beauty of the entire parcel is it's really difficult to find anything in Salina that's 17, 18 acres in a unit in the heart of town. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty for us is that because if we go out, out the outskirts, we can find those properties, but w everything we do has to come back in town. This allows us to be more centrally located. Any further questions, Mr. Kennedy? Did you consider um paving uh that uh, that area up to I, I don't know how to could could you go back to that one picture john of the uh, the colored um plan you're talking about the very southeast not that one yeah you're talking about well, this area here yes i, I mean R i could i could perhaps it's Justify. paved right to there, but then your thing, uh, the question is, would we pave yes. this area where there's some parking stalls? And, and so then the gravel would be completely internal to your, to your buildings, and Let there me. would not be, 65, I, I just, I'm struggling with 65. making this we work could, with other. Yeah, that's doable, I suppose. Yeah, I, I, th I don't see a reason. If, if that would be the desires of, of this commission, um, I think that that's doable. And there, there probably is some logic to that. Certainly, it will affect the bids, which we always, for the, we represent the taxpayers in this, so obviously it's not our money, it's a tax, but we, we look at that always in our decisions. But that would be doable. So what you're saying, Sydney, is would we consider paving from here yes. like this? So that this area right there yes. where our service vehicles may come and go yes. from would be paved. Yeah. I think that's a reasonable request and certainly one we'd consider if that would be the desires of the commission. D does uh, does everyone understand now the the uh, the area that we're talking about there? Can if you yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir, right, right there. there. The, the brown or the taupe area, Is everything area that's on there is Didn't proposed as gravel and the gray shaded area would be the paved is what's being proposed. And then the paving would stop yes. at this point right there. Is that what you're saying, Sydney, right? Yes. yes. I think I think we should if that's a desire as a commission. Well I'd rather not, I think we should we could consider that and would but do that. That would certainly take any uh uh you know possibility of that being a, a visual thing and from uh, uh from a standpoint of would we be setting precedent uh uh, maybe somewhat, but but it would be certainly uh, internal to your operation there, and it would be easier for us to justify that. Yeah, the rest of it's all internal, and uh, so. Other than that, I think it's a wonderful use of the land. Um, I think it will be a visually attractive uh, addition to that span of, of Broadway, and I know that you keep up your facilities, and it will be attractive and I, I don't have any other concerns about the whole 17 acres being considered as a, a PDD at this point and um, 
I think if you would, I don't know what the rest of the commission thinks about that paving, adding that paved area there. But my other thought was if the school board would agree to a timeline of, say, within five, eight, I don't know, X number of years, that then you would agree to, to pave that. For me, then the planning commission could go on to say to the next applicant that wants gravel, yes, we allowed gravel initially, but there was an agreement that they could um, save and, and think of in their, within their funding plan over the years that that would become a paved surface. So. Sydney, I appreciate your comment. I'm, I'm hesitant to commit future boards. That's right. a hard thing to do. I can say this. I, I can't imagine that whomever follows me in my position wouldn't work towards having the rest of that paved, mm -hmm. especially if it becomes an issue for us. We'll be the first ones to mm -hmm. have the impact right. from if it becomes an issue, then logically right. we're going to want to do something yeah. different. Yeah. And I'm trying not to have it be an issue for I understand. this board. I understand. The USD 305 has been a great neighbor, as you, as you mentioned, and, and uh, their facilities stand on their own the, around town. I, uh, I think, and I, I, I agree with Sydney. This is a, uh, from a planning perspective, this is a, a, a great project for a transition area like this. I think it's uh, uh, very much in line with our comprehensive plan, the new plan, and, and uh, I think it's going to be a model if we get it done. Well, we tried hard to make it that way, and we want it to be a nice transition. But I think there is, there's at least Mr. Stevens is wanting to ask a question about. I'm not clear on the question about lighting, but we want to talk about traffic lights, and I think there's some concerns they want to address. But uh, but I wanted to finalize by saying we want it to be we want it to be a model for that area. We want it to be as attractive as our other facilities, just like you said. And the one thing we can commit to, I believe, based on our history, is that we will maintain it properly, and it'll it'll never become a rundown. We would hope, unless there's one other thing that after we go through all this, and if we get approval from the commission, the planning commission, the city commission, it's still contingent upon bids as every project we do. So we may have your approval and you don't see it happen. If the bids come in too high, we simply couldn't do it. Right. What, where do you see signage and what kind of signage? Uh, we won't need, because of the nature of the facility, we would rather focus our more quality signs on our school properties if we're talking about our, like our high schools. But there would probably be some signage. I would think there would be a small sign here indicating what the facility was and possibly Possibly, but I'm not even sure if we need one here. More like here would be entrance or something like that. Then above, John, if you could go down slightly so we could see the north. As you know, the city approved, we have a sign here that says Hageman Education Facility. It's a very attractive sign. We've matched it. We had a design so it matched our facility so it doesn't just. And uh, then I would see eventually with phase two and three mm. signage here yeah. to indicate what those facilities are. But those are not part of the plan right now. Right now, the only signage I would see would be what the city may allow for this entrance and this entrance, or possibly even just one in front of the facility. And so people know what it is. And lighting would be on the back of the property, not on the Broadway side? Accent lighting probably, and Dean talked about that. We don't want any lighting that would be uh, bothersome to the neighborhood, but we may have to use some down lighting for security purposes. As you know, most of our facilities have lights on the building, which we found to really help with uh, uh, vandalism on the facility. It really cuts down on the vandalism. So we would use some lighting, uh, but work with the city on what would be appropriate and not creating uh, excess lighting for neighbors. Any further questions, Mr. Kennedy? Thank you. As this is a public hearing, would anyone care to address this commission or any we further? Kind of tag team. Charles may have. You may have some questions. Okay. Well. I don't know that I have anything left. Ken seems to have taken all my glory <laughs> in describing the building here. The um, just as Ken said, you know, we went to a great deal of, of effort and looked at a lot of different design solutions to really. Um, keep all of the, you know, the activity of the building back here on the inside area. If you look at the floor plan, you know, you can see overhead doors throughout that whole facade. We really wanted to uh, make sure that we, you know, we weren't having traffic, uh, you know, access and trucks loading and things visible from the Broadway side. As far as the, the orientation of the building, uh, Ken, you know, referred to the IMC uh, where they have two employees, the copy center that has three employees. That, that IMC is in, is in this little area right here. The copy center is in this area right here. So we see 
the, the traffic that would come for those, you know, it, whether it be district staff or uh, deliveries, using that parking that's up here on the north side, and, you know, really pretty limited. Most of that stuff actually goes through as it go gets distributed to the district through the pony, which is delivered back here in this loading area. All that loading is taken care of on the inside of the building. Um, so really just trying to, to keep that to keep that clean. Um, the, the, the storage uh, in the, primarily in this big open area and some of the maintenance areas down here at the south end. As Ken said, uh, all of the, uh, the district vehicles will be stored inside the building at night. So that parking that, we're, that we talked about on the south end is probably mainly just transitional vehicles or maybe um, employees going from their private vehicle into the to the district vehicles so just a, a real limited amount right there um, but yeah if there's any other questions related to the building um, yeah I, I'm happy to answer whatever I can questions I mr. Could just blanket all the questions together I mean as far as this proposal is put before us today there's quite a number of staff exceptions do you have any problem with any of those as, as uh, they no, I defer us. that to yeah, defer that to the owner, defer that to Ken. But no, uh, not 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 really. Um, there was on that that colored plan. Um, I actually, I think Ken ad actually addressed that the the easements that we'd talked about. This easement here was uh, related to the existing sewer line that, that was there. As part of our uh, discussions with the, the city staff, there was the, um, going to be a requirement that we add a fire hydrant uh, to the east side of this facility. Uh, we looked at this as a possible location right here, given the, uh, the new, uh, a new water line around here that would actually, actually what that would do, there's a dead end line right here behind Genesis. And then that would enable that line to be to be looped, which would be a benefit to everybody. The uh, also the detention uh, that was discussed. We are working with a, a civil engineer uh, who has completed a preliminary drainage study, and based on uh, on his study, the detention area would all be back in this area here, as identified on this preliminary drawing. Uh, it's actually the the required detention appears to be a little smaller than what we showed here, and and as you guys saw earlier, a good portion of this area is already in a no build easement. So, again, that that uh, that seems to work well. I think that's all I all I have. Any further so. questions, Mr. Renz? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone from the public care to address this application? Please uh, approach the podium if you can and. Give us your name and address. I hope this works. It did, it did good. Um, I'm Merlin Stevens, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-S. -E I live at 340 Maple. Um, I'm on the south end or south east end of the fringe on the other side of the street. I live on Maple Street and I've heard a little bit about the background about everything else here. I have lived there since 1967. I know you're not supposed to live that long in one position but I have I've seen things go and come Dan Stack, Kent Johnson Dean and all the people down here I know them I appreciate you listening to me but I think there's a few things Mr. Kennedy has said that I agree with we are not against the school. Everybody I've talked to in my neighborhood, which nobody wants to come and talk. So um, I can talk for myself. I cannot talk for them. But I know what's going on in some of their minds. If you know that area very well,
you know the area very well. That's better. I was on this against taking out the crosswalk in 19... 205, it started. 2005 finally it started. Got it rid of it in 208. If you notice our area out in there, there is five outlets. You got Roberts, Haskett, Smith, Maple. Then you go around the band and go to Satron and back to Otto. That is the only way all those people get out of that area. That bridge was put, put in in 1965. Before Dan Stack's time, it was proposed that that was a bad place to cross, which it was. But we did not have any fatalities. In the last three months, we had a fatality. We took that out. They wanted to make that a roundabout completely so we couldn't get off of Broadway to go up to Cloud Street. There are people that work on the east side of town that live there that wanted to go across rather than going down to Roberts or Smith. So we took it out and put the roundabout in, which as Dan says, we haven't had a lot of traffic problems, but we did. We had a fatality. Always before, since 1967, we've had accidents there, but nobody was killed. We are going to put more traffic over here in this area, being a maintenance shop, being a truck delivery shop, if they're coming in from the south, they're going to be coming up Broadway. They're going to have to get into that roundabout, which is halfway a roundabout, because it's high in the middle. If you go down there, you can come back. But you can't get on Broadway. So when this was put in, yes, this would be sold for maybe putting a stoplight in there, because the city and KDOT put in 600 foot of sidewalk, goes down to cloud. So we wait for the stoplight there and come across and go on east if you care to. Preferable, I go across the half roundabout and go up the street because there's no sidewalk there. And they got driveways that was there for the trailer court, but there are cuts in there that don't go on the sidewalk, so I can't ride on the sidewalk. Same way on Cloud Street. So what I'm saying is, I think, and I know this is not what you're focusing on, as Dean says today, is on the gravel portion, which I say that's no you're leading up to problems there. You've got it on Cherry Street. You had complaints of mud coming in on Straight Street. We was trying to upgrade some of the other places around town. Some of them have closed their doors because they couldn't make the grade. So I think, and I believe Mr. Kennedy and the school district, Yes, we'll be taxed if it needs to go up to get cement, but I still think we need cement or complete furnace. Because all them trucks coming back in here, who's washing them? Are they going to wash them there at maintenance shop? I don't know what to do at the maintenance shop. I was at the maintenance shop one time. We wash trucks. We service trucks. You're going to have it inside, or are you going to be out on the gravel or on that little paving? But the trucks come back in pushing cement. Uh, in the morning when we have snow, they're pushing snow around the schools. They come back in. Is it going to melt there, or is it going to come off at? 
So I think we need to have blacktop all over the place when it's being taken care of. I think if we're going to put in a gas station, I think it should be underground, not up in the air. I hope your traffic, I think if Dan, if I'm correct, you're going to start working on in 2012 at 9th and Cloud, making it wider because it can't handle the traffic off of Ninth now. By putting this down here, we got more traffic coming. It's all going to go on cloud. I see they're going to have a cut down here on Broadway. Is that going to go so the trucks can go both ways? Are we going to have to take that uh, uh, media out again? I don't know. We've been talking about a cut but it hasn't, and it says it's supposed to be in the drawing, the plat drawing. Is this going to be in the plaque drawing? These are things that I'd like to see addressed, and then we come back here afterwards, and it's in, then we gotta take it back out. That's costing money, too. Let's get it right to start with, so we don't have to take it out and waste, waste taxpayers' money. I've got a pump station behind me, for instance. When we put in New Broadway, they didn't put a cut in there so the trucks from the city could go in and check that pump. They was parking across the street, coming across. Finally, some city person seen them, said that was not feasible, so we come back and we cut a cut in there and then put a little cement drive in there now. Should have been done to start with. But I'm just saying, um, you know, um, I think we need to look at the whole picture all the way around. And the gravel, definitely, I think that should be a no-no from now because I think you're going to be prejudiced and have other places that will want gravel in their streets or on their parking lots. And you know if there's dirt and all these trucks that's coming in, they're going to pick up gravel or something else that's going to go somewhere else. Um, I hope that cut, I don't know where that cut is. They come up out of that um, uh, driveway now yeah, on to Broadway. Where is this, Dean? How far west of that drive that is in the video place now? Used to be Shoeless Joe's. It's right down in there. Where is it? At the at the east at the northwest end. Well, this this driveway would be opposite this little commercial area. These are the houses on Hagman. That would be on Hagman. No. This no. driveway here is this is Broadway. This is the Broadway driveway that's being served. This is the driveway on the side of Hagman. Okay. So that would be up there in the middle is what you're telling me of that lot? The, the driveway that they're proposing would be right opposite the uh, center of that raised roundabout. Straight west of the south end of the Genesis building. How's that for... <laughs> so trucks could come from the north and go in there then? No. Just from the south. primary circulation here is is to come in on uh, Hegeman and come and either go down to Broadway through there or back up to Cloud but but the primary circulation is going to be coming in from the west on Hegeman and exiting uh, on to Broadway and there is no no proposal or no support for breaking the median at that location. 
So if there's a driveway on Broadway, everybody would have to turn right or go north. There would be no plan to break the median so that you could come across. So trucks coming south on Broadway, southwest on Broadway, could not get in to Hagman. Correct. And go no, north. If they were coming south from Broadway, they'd have to come down Cloud, come down Hageman here, and turn in. And go into the roundabout. Yes. So if you're coming from the north, you're going to get in here by turning at Cloud, coming down Hageman, and then coming in here and exiting and coming out, but only going Anything north. else? I'm the only one here. Okay. Well, thank you for your comments. We but I it. think we need to look at the traffic because it's going to put more traffic on cloud. Okay. No, you know, even when we had other things there, you know, look at the maintenance shop. How many vehicles is there? How many maintenance is coming in? How many is going out? I mean, we propose parking lots that's supposed to take care of what's supposed to be done. But look down at the corner of 9th and Otto Street where we moved um, Brown Mackey from downtown because they didn't have enough parking. Now they're parking out on the main streets in residential districts because they've only got 100 parking lots in their parking area, which isn't enough for 400, 600 big kids. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else care to address this application? OK, any further discussion? I'd entertain a motion. A couple points of clarification from staff perspective. The one being that um, in terms of there is a requirement you you can act and make a recommendation without um, on an application for zoning without a plat but until and unless there is a plat there's no zoning change on this property that can take effect it is a requirement that property has to be platted in order to be rezoned the the plan here is to um, do that on a deferred basis rather than concurrently. Um, we again have laid out alternatives. And these would be recommendations that would come from you and go to the City Commission as to the, the zoning classification. In terms of looking at the uses, what we're trying to do is identify all the permitted uses on the full 17 acres. Um, what would come back to you in the future would be any request to add uses that you don't see on that list except for schools that we will incorporate into that. Um, the other thing that would come back to you is, is final development plans for phases two, three, and the unknown area uh, to the southeast. Um, each time that that is developed, that would come back before the commission and things like uh, signage and things like that would be addressed specifically for those phases. Um, the other thing I would note is that um, the options were to approve with any conditions you th uh, feel are appropriate and any exceptions you feel are, are justified. The other would be to, uh, to say yes, this is consistent with the comprehensive plan, but we feel there's additional detail that's needed to make a recommendation, or you could say we feel like we need a plat to make a recommendation. Um, the thing that we would caution is that if there's any motion that involved making or granting an exception or parcel exception on the paving requirement that one, that the geographic area for which you are recommending an exception should be identified and then secondly some uh, form of finding as to the justification or basis for accepting that area should be made as to whether it's the fact that it's 
hidden or not readily viewable or other things, but um, the only way that granting an exception like that is, is defensible is if there are reasons articulated for that so that um, in the future when a request comes up, Yes, that request was approved, but it was approved because, and you don't meet the because. So um, that is, um, we think we've tried to, to identify appropriate conditions and conditions that are um, fairly standard for a planned development district. But again, um, I've, we've had discussion about granting no exception to the paving requirement, to granting it as requested, to granting it but eliminating um, what I understand to be this this area down here, and um, that would need to be articulated in any motion, and then the the justification for uh, why um, the exception should be granted for that area in this particular application my only other question was you had suggested public sidewalks on Hageman or or did we want to <clears throat> what we talked about was the need to improve the sidewalks along cloud, cloud. right what so, we did not um, we didn't have that fleshed out as a specific condition I there is a there are portions of sidewalk along cloud there some of them have been covered up over time. They may be buried, um, but they're not. I don't think you can just brush them off and, and use them. Um, it would be a discretionary item for you if you wanted to include that area and, and also down to Hegeman. That's not identified as, as one of the 12 conditions in, in the staff report, but if you wanted to articulate that as a specific condition that would be uh, appropriate that could include public sidewalk along the south side of cloud it could be include public sidewalk along the east side of Hegeman um, could we could the Planning Commission for instance stipulate a public sidewalk on the south, south side of cloud at this time and then when phase two and phase three is developed the planning commission could reserve the the you, right you would have the right at the time that those site plans were submitted to you to to address that there okay. were we've done that to a degree on the hawthorne uh heritage at hawthorne where okay. um, the sidewalk on 10th street was deferred until phase two uh -huh. came about okay. um Wouldn't so that you, be more you appropriate could appropriate at platting dean Sidewalks are required at platting stage, or do you do it now? Um, we're not really getting new streets out of that, so it, it would be appropriate to include that as a condition in, in the site plan approval here okay. if, if that had been identified because we're not building any new streets. All right. Okay. Now, is everyone clear on the <laughs> choices? Mr. Kennedy. <coughs> I need to be clear at this point, uh, if you will. I, I'm not, certainly we have, no, we have no argument with the sidewalk on Cloud Street. We, we see that as important. It'll, it'll fix a sidewalk that apparently is in total disrepair and that needs to be done. But I'm not clear on what the sidewalk along Hageman, what that'll serve. It doesn't connect anything. It, there's no way to really, there's no pedestrian crossing across Broadway at that point. And there's no sidewalk on Broadway. And there's, I don't, I'm not sure what the sidewalk running north and south along the east side of Hageman in that area would serve short of maybe our students if we ever get phase two walking to the operations facility, which I don't really see happening. So I'm not sure what the purpose of that side, not that we're against it entirely, but I just don't see the purpose of it. Now, possibly you, you do, I don't know if that's, uh, I mean, I, I want. There's, it is not a crosswalk, is it? Yeah, we don't, and we frankly don't want our kids crossing there. Our kids are supposed to by, well, they're doing it they're down but, but when the city planned the project that they did, the students were supposed to go to Cloud Street and cross at the pedestrian crossing, the lighted crossing. Like yeah, 
I understand. Mm -hmm. I, I don't doubt that that happens, sir. But I just wanted to, wanted to point that out. Yeah, just, yeah, just well, on, on the north side of Hageman there, that's the, the what uh, Ken's question east was. East side. East side of Hageman? East side, east side of Hageman, Hageman yes. Having to do with whether there's a need for a sidewalk along here when there's no designated crossing to cross Broadway I'm, here. I'm pretty sure there's already one there, Dean. I mean, I'm looking at the aerial right now, and I don't see why there. There's definitely a sidewalk there currently. On the east side of Hageman? Yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember <laughs> either. So maybe it's I guess grown over there's there. always the, there's no sidewalks to connect to. I mean, I know Ken's heard that before. So I guess I don't want that to be the reason we don't allow. Right. Don't don't talk about them on Broadway because where are we going to start and when? I guess I just feel like not. I I don't know that we need to require sidewalks there at this point in phase one of the development. But there may become it may become a, a more of an issue once they know for sure what phase two and three are going to be, and then it could be taken up at that time. And maybe there's a sidewalk already there, and we won't have to even consider it. So. Moot point. <laughs> okay. Um, any further discussion on this matter? Would anyone care to entertain this voluminous motion? <laughs> I would try, Mr. Chairman. I would say that we approve the proposal as it's presented with the 12 staff exceptions and or, or recommendations, and to uh, include the uh, discussion of... Uh, sidewalks on cloud when the appropriate portion of the plan comes forward and uh, with the understanding that the gravel uh, area behind the building would not extend south of the uh, south of the building itself it would that the parking lot there on the south end would be paved and, and what would your justification for that be my justification would be that that area is completely internal to the site both visually and uh, functionally okay and then did you your motion also include to add schools to the oh, list and of to de add, yes, development uh, limitations we'll add schools to the list of permitted uses uh, i will second that uh, uh yeah i i just want to make sure that does your motion include that the school district would take care of cloud in this phase the sidewalk, I mean, on cloud in this phase. No, I didn't say it that way. Oh. Uh, well, I, I, I think that's do, something they're I'd willing to do. I'd be comfortable with amending it in that okay. form. I just said it would be addressed when that portion of the plan came forward. But Okay. Yeah. It, well, I would uh, withdraw okay. the motion and include that. Do we have to back up no, from that? No, you, you can just clarify that the motion includes the, we'll the, let the motion sidewalk be clarified on cloud. It will include the uh, sidewalk on cloud okay. at this point of the plan. Okay. And, and we'll still second that. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to approve application PDD 11 3 with the, with the um, first of all, in the first staff recommendation, the addition of schools as one of the, the permitted uses, and as number 13, uh, sidewalks on the uh, cloud side at this time. Mr. Chairman, it, it may lend weight. Uh, I don't know what Dean would think of this, to our justification, if we would include that it is our understanding that, uh, if possible, at a future time, that the school district sees the value of paving that whole area. Or the need for, yeah. for that. Okay. So, in, 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 in that justifier, in that um, waiver of, of the, uh, the paving, um, except for the portion up to the southeast corner of the building, mm -hmm. per, yes, perpendicular to that southeast corner of the building, that the, uh, all the traffic and the visual aspect of the, of the gravel is internal, and at some future time as the uh, district sees monetary funds and or a need, that that become hardscape or hard surface. Okay. That was a mouthful. That, Margaret Yarnovich would have been proud of us for this. Is that, would you add that to your yes, justification? I, I think that might help in future. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And does everyone understand that? 
motion. I understand anything that's going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got a we've got a motion that includes about 18 andas, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not even sure what I'm reading here is worth a toot anyway. No, I'm sorry. It, 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 they've been well, how, we've been discussing this for two hours, and I still am not sure I want to approve it. Okay, well, and certainly that is your, your uh, right and responsibility to vote as your conscience sees fit. I just um, want you to hear me. Yep, <laughs> very good. And, and um, I, I hope that we do hear you. Okay. We'd, and is everyone clear on the motion that's on the table right now and the second? Okay. All right. You appear ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Please record, Sue, that Dr. Hodges is a nay vote. Motion carries 7-1. Yes. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Item number three on the agenda, consider a request from the Slane Community Theater to amend the approval final development plan for the Salina Community Theater, PDD 09-2-2A, to expand the usage of the proposed bus drop-off area on the north side of Iron Avenue on the front of the theater building. Sue, could you also uh, note that uh, Commissioner Kennedy rejoined the meeting? Dean? Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, this was a uh, campus plan that was also done as a planned development district and a preliminary and uh, combined preliminary final development plan was submitted as a uh, part of that and uh, you approved it subject to uh, s some waivers or variations that were approved as to front yard setback along iron. Uh, zero setback for the St. Francis Academy building, uh, lot coverage, uh, no front yard landscaping required between Iron Avenue and the uh, front property line. And uh, in that, the, uh, in both on the plan and in, in the uh, staff body of presentation, the area um, in front, which John may or may not be able to blow up, but this area right here was um, identified as a bus drop-off area and was presented to you as a plan for an area where school buses and charter buses um, bringing uh, patrons to the theater would be able to get off of the uh, traveled way for iron and a drop-off uh, passengers um, at that location to enter the theater. So. Uh, what was done there was basically a 90-foot long curb inset was created within the Iron Avenue right-of-way and uh, the uh, label and the uh, description of that was as a bus drop-off area. We have uh, learned in further conversations that the uh, community theater believes that a literal interpretation and application of bus drop-off area would be too limiting on the day-to-day -day operations of the theater. And so uh, in a letter that you have in your packet, they've submitted a request to approve uh, a change to the final development plan drawing that would expand and clarify how this area would be used and function on a, a daily basis. So uh, the plan that is an alternative to bus drop-off that's put in front of you today would take that area and uh, it would be striped for four parallel uh, parking spaces. So parallel would be what you see on other portions of iron where vehicles would pull in and could uh, either load or unload or park uh, on a parallel basis, parallel to iron and not, not at an angled uh, arrangement. Um, there would be a plan to have signage placed at the west end of that inset that would indicate uh, no U-turns are allowed on iron. Um, the two traffic movements that have identified as the least safe are uh, parking at an angle and backing out into iron and uh, also dropping off 
uh, patrons at that area and then attempting a U-turn to go back east on Iron. So those uh, movements would not be permitted. Um, the, the space would not otherwise be posted with regulatory signage, but during performances the theater's proposing that they would put out um, sandwich board type signs that would label that as a courtesy unloading zone and uh, no U-turn um, so that they could um, identify for their patrons how that would expect to be used. At other times, again, there's, there's no uh, proposal to post regulatory signage that would otherwise uh, limit that space. So um, basically, if somebody parked there eight hours, the uh, police department is not going to give them a ticket because it is a, a public on-street parking uh, space. So what the uh, community theater is proposing is to let them have the burden of regulatory enforcement and education of people using it and the city's regulation would probably uh, be um, if somebody parked in there as a head-in angled parking spot they would receive a ticket if somebody um, performed a u-turn maneuver there they would receive a ticket but otherwise it would be left to the community theater to inform and educate um, their patrons in that degree Although this is on-street parking, it would be somewhat similar to the school district, which is, um, has the burden of educating parents and others as to the appropriate use of school drop-off areas um, and, and what is expected there. So um, again, we've, we've got a plan that was presented and is labeled and stamped approved for a bus drop-off area. And this is coming back to you to amend and, and clarify that. So your options would be to approve an amendment of that plan drawing to allow the expanded use of that inset as requested by the applicant with any additional conditions that you think are appropriate. You could postpone consideration of this request to allow other alternatives to be considered or proposed. Um, you could deny the request to expand the use of this area beyond that of a bus drop-off for school and, and charter buses. So this, this is a, a deviation from the way that we uh, presented this to you and the basis on which we believed it was approved. So it's brought back to you um, for your review um, to change the status of this area. Um, we provided some information to you in your packet about um, guidelines for downtown sidewalk signs. We do allow uh, businesses to put sandwich board signs out on the public sidewalk on Santa Fe and on Iron on, in the downtown area subject to these uh, stipulations. And so we would work um, with the uh, community theater to get their temporary signs located in a way that they wouldn't interfere with the uh, public use of that sidewalk and, and plaza area in front. Um, but with that, I'd be happy to address any questions that you have. Uh, Mr. Renz was the project architect for Salina Community Theater, and he might be able to help clarify this request as well. Any questions of staff? I guess I want to say uh, I applaud the applicant and the architect in being proactive in this and instead of allowing it to become a de facto drop-off area um, other than the use for the buses. And uh, I, I guess uh, if there's no questions of staff, Mr. Renz or Mr. Spicer, would you care to address the commission? I, I have one. Yeah, go I'm ahead. sorry. I, I was looking on that. We only have two handicapped stalls for that four I think there are six 
I think total in the whole lot. Oh, I didn't see those up there. I apologize. I did not. There's six. Because my first thought was that would make a nice handicap parking. Yeah, they they have met their need in this area okay. and up front as well. I didn't see the ones up there. I I understand that that's considered on street parking, so that if somebody ends up parallel parking there for eight hours, the police can't give them a ticket or however many hours. But can that not be changed? Is there some reason why that portion is no longer on street parking? It is located within the Iron Avenue yes. right of way and it is on street parking just as it's on street parking further to the west in the downtown area. It is, it's an extension of Iron Avenue. Right. And so from a, a parking enforcement standpoint, it is on street parking. But all over we make we say no parking here for one reason or another. You can't, you can't make that. It, it is subject to that, but it would have to be signed that way, and yeah. the community theater is not interested in having metal parking signs there posted behind the curb that would designate that. I see. Okay. That, that's why this alternative proposal for signage is okay. before you. Mr. Spicer. Um, I, I, I think from the beginning it was uh, not our intent to have this be simply a drop-off area and indeed it serves the purposes of the community theater better to have it uh, change throughout the day and indeed throughout the year. There are several weeks of the year in which school buses will be dropping off there and then they'll exit once they've dropped the children off and go park elsewhere and come back and pick them up. Uh, and we are in the process now of negotiating with several bus companies to have them bring tours to Salina and this is an ideal situation for them because one of the things they consistently ask is there a bus drop off area and now we can legitimately say yes there is. Um, but that for optimizing the use of that space for theater business the rest of the time uh, we feel that the request in the letter that I sent to the Commission is uh, is appropriate to the use that is the best for the community theater on the long uh, view. In your in your letter under point number five, it says using this area, area semicolon and then there's nothing following that. Was there were there more points you wanted to make there? Um, that's a clerical error on okay. my part because th that was actually switched with one other oh. item Cut and at, uh, kind of thing. at someone's request and I didn't proofread it successfully enough. So you, you, your staff wants to haul these sandwich signs in and out. They start in the morning and as the day changes, they may need to take them out because a bus may be coming, and then they'll haul them back. And believe it or not, that's correct. And then My box office manager insists that she wants to do this so that her box office can operate as efficiently as it possibly can for the longest amount of time during the day. Well, I understand why you would like. That makes perfect sense to me. It's just I'm I. I so even at night, you'll need those because people will see that as, oh, my gosh, there's a parking space right there. So you'll need those signs there even at night during performances. During performances, yes. Yeah. So in, is somebody going to dress in a gorilla suit and be the enforcer? <laughs> or? Yeah. How's that? It, it was suggested that, uh, I mean, when people park there and they are not coming to the theater, theater staff would it would be incumbent upon theater staff to tell them please notice the sign that this is only for theater parking if somebody tries to park there long term who goes into the theater to see the show then uh, public humiliation was suggested as a possible alternative but we would certainly Works be able so to well. go in and make an announcement please remove your car this is temporary parking only has anybody addressed the fact that they might park on the <coughs> sidewalk? Yeah. Paint that like the sidewalk? 
that goes through the parking where people pull in and yeah. I'm, I'm not sure. Some people would park in the parking area. Some people are going to pull up on your sidewalk. Too, mm -hmm. I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. okay. There's a curb there, so you can't pull up on it. The, it's very there's difficult to there. see, but there is a, there's there a vertical is, okay. curb, right? It, it all blends in, but there's a vertical <laughs> curb right, <laughs> right here. So we're not, not going to have people up, <laughs> up to the ball. Or the curb I guess will. they could, but then I think we do call the police. <laughs> Is this, is this the wording actually on the sign, courtesy parking and drop off only during performance hours? Is that the wording you're considering? That's the proposed wording. Because that's confusing to me, courtesy parking. I don't know I'm what that means. Valet that's <laughs> well, valet implies that somebody's going to park your car for you. And but I would th see that as that's a, it's a courtesy to me to park there. That's, that's true. I mean, we, the, the verbiage isn't set, but the okay. intent is that okay. it would be temporary and drop off only. Yeah, yeah. Valet parking might be a thing. There you go. A little fundraising. We've discussed that, and the insurance is a nightmare. Uh, Seriously. Really? Mm -hmm. okay. I just, the, the building is so attractive, and sandwich boards are not. Well, we felt that the sandwich boards, which are transitory, are better than permanent signs. I agree. It's still, but they're going to be out there a lot. But they're also lower to the ground, and they don't impede the, the view of the building. Isn't this somewhat typical of what you see at other venues? Uh, you see that when you go to other events, you'll see temporary signage out in front for a dedicated parking for certain purposes, whether it be bus, valet, or drop-off, and, and you see that. Well, uh, and especially downtown venues where they limit, there's limited parking anyway, you see that. So I think it's consistent with what you see in bigger communities. Especially when, when that usage shifts during the day. Right. Yeah, that's my question. On a, on a day that you're going to have two or three buses come in plus have a show and people are going to park. That's a lot of... How does that get... Well, we have, we have staff that meets every bus that comes in to find out where they're from, how many kids, where they're going, guide them into the theater. So every but bus that comes from USD 305 or surrounding USDs is met by a staff member. So uh, it would be easy to tell them, please pull up here and park, and then you can come back and pick people up. But if somebody's parked there when they arrive... <laughs> Um, and they have to chase them down. We would have to ask them to leave. And then where does the bus go during that time? Well, unless there are four people that pull in there before, I, just, bef before about s 6 or 7 a.m., because that's about the time we begin arriving to get ready for morning performances. During an evening performance on a normal show, don't you get buses from Eagle Crest or Presbyterian Manor? I, I'm, I'm not sure. Do they, would they be using that? Uh, they can drop off there or they can mm -hmm. drop on the east side of the okay. building. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as a grandparent who drops kids off there, I, it's really helpful, I know, to be able to pull up there and lift them out. And if it's only dedicated for bus parking, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Why didn't we think of this before? Bus parking? No. Well, it's for drop off for buses as You're it right. is now. Right. That's what they want to change, so. Yeah, the, on the, from the staff perspective, if and I don't know, if John, you have a site plan, but there's also a there's also a bus or a drop off area that's along the east side, right. and really we, in our own minds, we were looking at this as a as a drop off area with a set of, but that's not the main entrance to the theater. So it, when we reviewed it, it didn't it didn't surprise us that we had two bus a, a drop off area here and a drop off area here and that's that's the way that we looked at it I guess if it doesn't work it won't work and you'll figure something else out <laughs> well I I, I gotta I commend you for wanting to even try to police this uh, on the on the strict view of aesthetics and, and I agree that you know that it's a gorgeous facility and, and Mr. Wren should be in the Salina Community Theater should be very proud of that and uh, Thank you. Uh, some signs would definitely detract from that uh, boy if you can police it more power to you I guess <laughs> that's, that's I, I think we'll manage I have a very tenacious staff <laughs>
we know that from having been at a Solana Community Theater when a tornado mm. siren was going <laughs> on, not once but twice. Very tenacious <laughs> staff. Any further discussion or any questions of Mr. Spicer or Mr. Rins? Good luck. Thank you all. Anyone care to make a motion? Bar, what we would point out is if you chose op option one, which would be to approve the amendment as requested, that would or should incorporate the uh, items on page five that deal with it. They would be striped as parallel parking spaces. There would be no U-turns allowed. And uh, your action would authorize the community theater to, to uh, temporarily place the signs that are described in your packet. So moved. Second. Second. And moved and seconded to approve application PDD 09 dash two slash two a all those in favor say aye. aye 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 opposed none being heard motion carries <laughs> item number four update on salina landfill operation on burma road john could you put the future land use plan up um we had a couple of meetings with uh Mr. Stack and Mike Frazier, Director of Public Works, and we were going over some potential operational changes um, out at the Salina Landfill and some things that were being discussed with the Solid Waste Planning Committee. And uh, in that discussion was, uh, are there any uh, planning or regulatory items um, that might come into play? And so the first thing we did was say, well, what does the comprehensive plan show for the uh, Salina landfill? And the answer was the comprehensive <laughs> plan map doesn't show the <laughs> Salina landfill. So we're bringing that uh, back to you. This um, area, which our, our color patterns aren't real good, but one of our public space designations is blue, blue for the airport, blue for the sanitary sewer treatment plant, blue for the water plant, blue for schools. Um, what should be blue is this section right there, which is a 640-acre parcel that is the site of the Salina, the Salina landfill. We realize that uh, it's kind of an out-of-sight, out-of-mind uh, situation. That we may have planning commissioners that are not aware that that is inside the city limits even though it's an island annexation out there. Um, back in that uh, progressive period of the early 1970s, we had a Metropolitan Planning Commission and a Metropolitan Board of Zoning Appeals that had jurisdiction outside the city limits in the uh, urban service area, and that uh, board approved a what would today be considered a conditional use permit to operate a landfill in this location in 1973 and in 1977 um, based on the uh, adoption of a new zoning ordinance and map conditional uses in place at that time were converted to permitted uses so the landfill in that location is a permitted zoning use subject to state permit requirements and in 1984, after uh, the Metropolitan Planning Board ceased to exist, the uh, property was annexed into the city so that it would be under the city's jurisdiction for uh, regulatory matters. And so um, if you're not familiar with the site, there's an access road that comes off of Burma Road. There's a gatehouse, a maintenance building and shop. There's a series of monitoring wells. Um, there's some detention basins on the property. The entire site is fenced, um, primarily with barbed wire fencing. There's some sections of chain link. Um, not the entire 640 acres is disturbed or used for disposal. And uh, the most recent estimate is that the uh, property out there has a capacity to um, support 87 years um, of a useful life of trash disposal. And uh, so we brought this to your attention to, to indicate that uh, not every community has control over its landfill disposal. Um, 
city of Wichita does not own or control a Wichita, a Wichita landfill and are dependent on others. Um, for a long time, the city of Hayes hauled their trash to Topeka to dispose of it. Um, so um, it is a valuable asset to the community. And uh, if we look at it in relationship to the comprehensive plan, um, the plan shows a possibility of employment uses to the north and to the east, but that is highly speculative because it implies that someday there will be utilities extended west of the airport, and that's not anything that's going to happen in the foreseeable future. Uh, but the landfill is heavily scrutinized by Kansas Department of Health and Environment. It's not a floodplain area. It's not a groundwater area, and it has no impact on airport operations. But we do uh, believe that it, it is deserving of its place and identification on the future land use plan. So uh, taking note of that blank space to correct uh, the oversight when the plan maps were done, we would recommend that uh, you recommend that the land use plan map be amended to show the landfill site as a public semi-public land use instead of being blank as it is today. And I'd best uh, to address any specific landfill questions to Mr. Stack, but uh, there, there are not a lot of land use implications um, from that operation out there other than to bring to your attention it is in the city. Any questions of Mr. Stack? Is, it, is there a motion to go ahead and... 615. I would make the motion to approve this. Okay. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to correct uh, the future land use land use plan map to amend the uh, the 640 acre landfill site as public semi public use instead of its current blank uh, designation. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None being heard. Motion carries. As far as other matters, um, this is the final meeting for Commissioner Soderberg, Ritter, and Meyer, unless he has a change of heart till we have a county outside the city representative that fills out an expression of interest form. So it's an opportunity for short speeches, um, but for outgoing commission members, but or words of advice. And then I, I have a couple other matters, but I did want to bring that to attention that Mr. Ritter and Mr. Meyer and Ms. Soderberg will be their final meeting. I have something I'd like to say. <laughs> I got a question on, and, and this might be for, on all the improvements they're doing on Marymount, how long, I, and I know this has probably nothing to do with anything, but that new sidewalk, they have it completely covered with trash. And we saw a kid driving his bike and he was weaving around concrete blocks and all that stuff. How long does a contractor, and it was there when, for days, how long can a contractor leave They, they cleaned it up sidewalk? last week, but I don't know when you were there. They, that was, yeah, that was a complaint that we had. And it's clear, clean I think, it today. Okay, because it was like that for at least a week. Mm -hmm. It was about a week. They were okay. cleaning mm -hmm. up and grading, and yeah, it was, it was not good. Mm -hmm. Okay. They've got, it, they've got it cleaned up now. And thank you but no I'm today's my last day <laughs> well I'd, I'd like to just keep peace at the house <laughs> I'd, I'd like to thank Commissioner Soderberg and Meyer and Ritter for their service um, and their uh, sticking through some of the tough situations that we've been in this Planning Commission and they I hope they go on to serve on other boards <laughs> thank you speaking of Tough situations. The Mr. Bankston, city attorney, informed me that a petition was filed today in district court challenging your decision as it relates to the Cherry Street Gate. So um, there, there was 30 days after final decision upheld by the city commission to do that, and they have uh, chosen to do that. So um, that's the other matter. We, uh, even though it's the day after Labor Day, we do have. Um, items filed for September 6th and uh, something I've been working on for 20 plus years was trying to get the uh, Centennial Commerce Center 
uh, plan development district that's out on Centennial Road, platted. Um, it is what we call a fictional plan development district because it exists in the world, but it doesn't exist anywhere else as actual lots or streets or anything. And the uh, owners out there have pooled together and decided to plat the property and get that recorded. So that will be uh, considered by you. It's something that's been worked on off and on since um, 1979. So it's probably a good time to get that taken care of. And uh, there's a... Where's it located? It is located north of Magnolia Road on the east side. And there's a little private street in there mm -hmm. called Commerce Circle. But that street exists in the world, but not on any plat or recorded drawing. And none of those lots actually exist. So this, this will take care of that um, and get it properly approved and recorded in the deeds office. Um, so those people that own property in there actually own a lot. And uh, so that, that will clean that up. There is a proposal um, to replat what's going to be called the McDonald's addition, and that will be the area between Ohio and the new Mound View extension. And uh, we'll create a deeper lot for McDonald's there. May involve the removal of the Fiesta restaurant and then create a second lot that would kind of front on Mound View there. Um, so that is scheduled uh, for that meeting as well. And then we have a, a daycare application for you to look at as well. So we will meet on the 6th. Um, I'm thinking that we will probably uh, have our election of officers and, uh, and volunteers to serve on other boards at that meeting as well as we have an item filed for the September Board of Zoning Appeals meeting. And Mrs. Soderberg is your Board of Zoning Appeals representative. And she won't be able to represent you in September. So we'll need to get somebody appointed for that, as well as a chairman. And I believe Mr. Ritter is the vice chairman. And Mr. Mikesell's out of terms. So we'll have to, as far as being chairman. Oh, really? Isn't this your second second uh, term, I believe, as chairman? Oh, so you can realize. you can have two consecutive terms as chairman, and then you gotta hand over the gavel. Oh, so good. we'll probably have election of officers at that time as well. I'll be sure to catch that on access. <laughs> yeah, don't don't miss the action. Yeah. <laughs> if if you don't have any business additional, we we do not either. We are adjourned. Well, you said it was nice of them to come forward. Yeah. You know, the city was in one of the likes. Oh. That, that was one of the. That was one of the they, they didn't volunteer. Yeah.